chair of the Northern Ireland Bat Group, to talk about one of the busiest years the organisation has ever had. So Robin, can you tell us just how busy this year has been? This year has been a record year for, for bat busyness, if you like. I think it's to do, do with the, the cold spring. A lot of our ground at bats now quite thin, emaciated. They don't seem to have had enough to eat through the summer. And can you give us an idea of the, of the kind of work that the Northern Ireland Bat Group does? Well, the Bat Group was founded way back in 1985 to coincide with the Wildlife Act. People had bats, couldn't get rid of them, bats were protected suddenly. So it was founded really to liaise between people and bats and get a win-win situation with it. But it has progressed on now. We, we do education, we do bat walks and talks, we run a club for young children, uh, we look after, we care for grounded, injured bats and hopefully restore them to the wild. So it has spread out. And when you do get phone calls, I mean, what are the kind of issues people are raising? You know, for, for, I mean, for example, is there still maybe a misunderstanding? Do people look at them as well, pests yeah, in some cases? A lot of people do. Bats do get a bad press here in Ireland. It must be part of our culture. Although Chinese, the symbol of happiness is a wee red bat. So, um, no, pe- people, I think it's misunderstanding. They, they don't understand that bats are beneficial to us, harmless to us. They don't chew wires. They're not like mice. They're, they're not... Uh, don't overrun the place with baby bats you know they've only one baby a year and that's it and um, most of our calls would be unfortunately maybe midnight you know there's a bat in my house or I found a bat but uh, usually once we explain to them what to do with it they're happy enough and I imagine it's, it's mostly a kind of a rural occurrence but I mean for for your kind of major urban areas like Belfast I mean the, is are, are bats can bats be common? In oh Belfast yes, you get well? you get tiny bats as well. Lots of bats. We've lots of of roosts in Belfast, and particularly new buildings. People think, oh, bats like old drafty castles and stuff. They love modern executive houses, believe me, <laughs> and they can have freedom of moving up and down all those roofs, you know. And so that's it. I suppose if someone you know in Belfast were, were out maybe looking, hoping to see a bat, I mean, where do you think they came to places they might be able to spot some? You see them in their garden, and you also see them round lampposts. Because, of course, our bats are insectivorous and they're catching the flies that fly around the lights. But lots of bats in, in the city. And uh, the argument has been made that bats are actually very, very important to our economy. I mean, can, can you explain exactly you know, how, how this works? Well, worldwide, wherever bats are found, um, they are beneficial. They, they propagate, they, they pollinate plants, etc., all over the world. But here in our country, their nature is natural pesticide. Tiny wee pipistrelle can eat 3,500 midges every night. I mean, farmers could have organic crops. They do in America. They put up loads of bat boxes and encourage the bats so that they save money on pesticide and they don't put poison on the food, etc. Everything's organic. Here, they, as I say, they eat the midges. Midges spread disease in sheep as well. Um, the larger bats, they'll eat moths. And moths in their larval state are big fat caterpillars that eat our food crops. So they're beneficial to us. And I understand that you've brought a couple of guests into the studio with you today. I have, yes. Now this is um, our smallest species in, in, in Ireland. This is a soprano pipistra. Its wings are folded in. Wings are the hands, of course, as you know. And these are his wee thumbs. He's called Pan, Peter Pan, of course, who could fly, and hopefully he's going to be set free again. Uh, this is a County Armagh bat. He comes from outside Lurgan. So. And in terms of the work of the bat group, I mean, how, how can people find out more about the work that you're doing, and how can people get involved as well? Well, we've got a website. You can look us up. <laughs> and uh, we're actually looking for people to recruit to be bat ambulance drivers, would you believe? We need people to pick up grounded bats to take them to licensed bat carers. So we're hoping to start training maybe next month on that. We also have a Young Bat Workers Club uh, that meets in Belfast Zoo. In fact, it starts next Wednesday, one Wednesday a month, and that brings on the children. They get all interested and they're, they're not big enough to actually do you know, bat work in itself. And so I'm just into this concept of, of the ambulance, as you call it. I mean, what, 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 <laughs> we call it a bat ambulance. <laughs> it's, people will phone up and say, we've got an injured bat. We'll maybe tell them how to refly the bat and hopefully... Eight times out of ten, the bat is just sort of needs rest and it will fly away. They, they usually you say, if it's still there in the morning, phone me. We'll make arrangements to get it picked up. We meet halfway or we need people maybe to pick that bat up for us if we can't make it.
There is obviously, as you mentioned, a lot of your work is in terms of giving people advice. You do a lot of work in the community with, with children in different groups. We do. And, but, but part of the work is, obviously, you, you do your sales care for bots as well. You do kind of... Yes, uh, some of us are, are actually bot carers. We have them. If they can't be released to the wild because we have a licence and we use them for educational purposes, we, we keep them. If they do, if a bot does have an accident that you hear about, I mean, in most cases, is it something where they can't be re released again back into the wild? In most cases, if, if there's no breakage of the wings or anything... They can be. They just really need rehydrated. They're wee mammals just like us. They, they need a drink. If they're stuck somewhere and you know, they don't get water and they need rehydration and tender loving care for a week or two and then we let them go. Um, if someone were to call looking for advice, I mean, speaking generally, I mean, what kind of advice would you give someone? I mean, what kind of steps can people take when it comes to taking care of bots they may find in their home and their garden? Well, first and foremost, um, bots are protected and you're not really supposed to be, you're not allowed to own one or handle one really unless you're going to give it assistance. You can't keep it on your own, you, you have to forward it to us. But if someone phones up and says, there's a bat on my wall outside, for example, it's been there all day, I would advise them to get a dishcloth or gloves or something, put it over the bat, bring the bat in, put it in a wee box, put holes in the box first, not, not put the bat in and then the holes. If you can, give it a drink of water, as I say, they need rehydration. And hopefully that night, take it out, either hang it up on the wall again, put the box out on its side, and hopefully the bat will go. If it doesn't the next morning, it needs to be taken to a bat carer. And we would rehydrate it and examine it, of course. And hopefully there's no breakage in the wings or anything. And hopefully it'll be released again. If it's a girl, it has to go back where we got it. If it's a boy, it can go wherever there are bats of his, his type. Uh, here's... Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo's a Leislers. You can hear him at once. Yep. Oh, no, Yo-Yo. Well, Yo-Yo's a Leislers. He's our largest species. And Leislers, unfortunately, are, are th their numbers are decreasing. This time of year, the bats are out of the summer roost. They're eating and eating and eating like mad. They've got to put a third of their body weight on or they'll not survive um, hibernation. So a lot of them haven't got enough food in them because of the bad spring, killed off all the midges, you see. In the so a lot of the bats we're picking up, they're not injured. They're just not fat enough. Robin, thank you very much for coming in today and thanks to Pan and Yo-Yo for coming in as well. Uh, I wish you all the best in your work. Thank you and thank you for helping to get the message across.